Hello everyone, my name is Devashish and I welcome you all to this video. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about address space layout randomization, which is also known as ACLR. So address space layout randomization or ACLR is a computer security technique which involves randomly positioning the base address of an executable and the position of different libraries, heaps and stack in processes address space. So the random mixing of memory address performed by an ACLR means that attacker no longer knows at what address the required codes such as you know functions, rope gadgets are actually located in the virtual memory. Uh, so just like DP, uh, ACLR is also not a very you know foolproof way to mitigate all the software based, based exploits. Uh, so what ACLR does is it it you know adds just an you know extra hurdle in the way of exploitation. So uh, rather than you know removing vulnerabilities from the system, ESLR kind of you know attempts to make it little more challenging for the attacker to exploit existing vulnerabilities. So uh, ACLR moves executable image into a random location where assist when actually a system boots up. So that you know makes it little hard for the exploit the exploit code to operate in a predictable manner. So uh, for a component to support ACLR, it is very important that all the components that is uh, you know uh, that is loaded alongside uh, that component must also support ACLR. So if we take an example, if a.exe consumes b.dll and c.dll, all three must support ACLR, you know, to be able to make ACLR foolproof. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense to have, you know, ACLR uh, enabled in one of the components. So by default, Windows Vista and later will randomize the system DLLs and EXEs, but DLLs and EXEs that are created by third parties or, you know, individual developers, uh, you know, must not, you know, opt out uh, the support of ACLR when they're actually compiling their application. So in Visual Studio, uh, in, in under linker option, you should find a, uh, find a flag which is you know slash dynamic base uh, you when you are actually compiling any application under visual studio you need to really make sure that you know that dynamic base flag is uh, you know is present and you are compiling it with, with that flag so that you know uh, that your your library or your executable supports aclr so whenever actually those libraries or executables are being loaded uh, in virtual memory uh, it will be you know placed at a random location so exploitation uh, of memory based uh, vulnerabilities will be little more difficult uh, when you are actually compiling it in such a manner. So um, as we have all, already spoken about this, right, ACLR actually also randomizes, randomizes stack and heap memory. So when an application creates a heap in Windows Vista and later the heap manager will create the heap at a random location to help reduce the chance that an attacker to exploit heap based buffer overrun succeeds. So heap randomization is enabled by default for all the application running on Windows Vista and later. So uh, no matter you use malloc or heap alloc to you know allocate heap memory, uh, the heap manager will take care of that and it will actually you know allocate that memory at a random place. Uh, so let's now talk about stack. So so when a thread starts in the process linked with um, uh, slash dynamic base, which means you know the flag for uh, ACLR. Windows Vista and later moves the thread stack to a random location to help reduce the chance of you know stack based buffer overrun uh, exploit will succeed. So that's how actually you know it randomizes the thread stack as well and makes it little difficult to predict a certain uh, memory address within the stack. So as we have spoken about this, right, ACLR is not a very foolproof way to, you know, mitigate software-based exploits. So just like DP, ACLR is also being bypassed uh, by exploits on a daily basis. So, so since the address space layout randomization was introduced, it has been, you know, bypassed countless times by real-world exploits and attacks. So attacker actually continuously develops new techniques to defeat ACLR. And there could be, you know, hundreds of ways ACLR can be bypassed. It actually totally depends on the, you know, creativity of of the exploit writer however uh, uh, here i am actually listing down you know some of the most popular ways to you know bypass aclr uh, so the first technique that is you know pretty popular is you know uh, it's creating a rope chain uh, from a non aclr module 
so what does this mean um so uh, suppose uh, as we have you know we have talked about this before you know to be able to make aslr very effective uh, we just uh, need to make sure that you know all the libraries or you know all the component of the software is also you know aslr enabled so that you know all the dlls that are being loaded uh, by any application also you know uh, are placed at a random location so if any of the dlls are not actually you know aslr enabled so uh, the loader will actually uh will load that particular dll uh, every time you know at the same place so if an attacker is able to find that right so it can actually easily uh, you know craft a rob rob gadget using that particular dll which is actually you know not aslr enabled and the exploit or the you know the rob chain will you know succeed every time so that is you know one of the most popular ways to bypass aslr and another one is you know is jit spraying so jit spraying is also one of the very popular techniques to bypass uh, bypass uh, aslr and you know i have you know listed down couple of uh, cvs as uh, which actually you know um, you can actually google about it and you you will also find you know publicly available exploits to actually learn more about it uh, so Mm, and there is there is a third technique uh, which is also pretty popular which is actually you know abusing information disclosure bug so uh, so there are actually you know out of bound read issues from stack or heap which can be you know used to uh, disclose uh, the base address of you know uh, of a particular object in memory and that particular object's address can be you know a, uh, can be used to you know find or resolve the base address of a particular dll uh, and that uh, and once the attacker actually finds the base address of the dll it can actually you know uh, craft a rope gadget from uh, using that particular base address and actually you know um, create a successful exploit uh, using that uh, dynamic rope gadget so uh, i have also actually listed down couple of you know popular cvs which are actually you know using this technique to kind of exploit uh, um, uh, to kind of you know bypass aslr so you can actually google about it and um, since actually this is are actually very short videos right so we decided not to actually uh, put much details of this technique in this video so if you want me to make a separate video on this techniques uh, you can actually you know uh, you can leave a comment in the comment section uh, i'll i'll i can actually you know um, i'll try to uh, create a video as soon as possible uh, on these techniques uh, that's all i wanted to discuss in today's video so i hope you have enjoyed the video and i hope uh, it it brought some clarity uh, about you know aslr so um, so thank you for your time i will see you in the next video bye bye